whenever your time comes, you have to be ready, especially at the quarterback position. At any moment, you could get called upon. Let's talk about practice real quick, okay? We're gonna go out and do team tempo versus the defense like we have been doing. We get a lot of guys involved. We have at least six receivers every game that are touching the ball. Everyone's just explosive. Everyone's having fun. Everyone's excited. Everyone wants to make the big play. The helmet was designed as a reminder for somebody that's important to them. I understand that you're playing for something more than yourself. Here's a throw to the end zone for Cody. He's there. He makes the catch. Touchdown! James White off the right side. He gets the first down and more to the 10, to the 5, to the end zone. Touchdown, James White. Demont gets a shotgun snap. Final play of the game. Launches the throw down toward the goal line. Ball tipped to the yes. end. Cut! Touchdown! Nebraska wins the game on the final play of the contest. Oh, baby! I was scared to death. You lay in a hospital bed and you're getting MRIs and they're scanning your brain and looking all over to see what's going on. It petrifies you. It would have been our second year at Utah State. Late September 2010. Woke up uh, in the middle of the night and uh, next thing I remember I was on, you know, I was on the bathroom floor basically passed out and I had hit my head. I broke two of the vertebrae in the back of my neck. My expectation level of, of maybe the team was, was uh, too high. Uh, my drive maybe came too high. I forgot about what was important. I forgot about myself. Gosh, looking back, it was before the BYU game. Changed my life in a real positive way. Can he get the edge? No. At Utah State, the goal was to make BYU the rivalry. How about that? The game day was a special day. The stadium was electric. When I knew he was up and was able to move and there was no risk of some sort of, you know, major spinal injury from being around, that he would be there for the game. And the Aggies have the win they've been waiting 17 years for. To snap that streak was special. How about the week for Gary Anderson? Midweek, he was in a neck brace. When you looked up and 31-16 at the end and it was over with, it was a special, special time to know that we had reached a goal. It'd be in my mind forever and in my heart forever, the way those kids played. It got very, very emotional. It wasn't like we just beat BYU, who we haven't beat forever. It was like our coach was okay. And trust me, we talked about that his dad had a big factor in that win for us. We know he's always looking down on us. All right, listen, let's talk about practice real quick, okay? What you're gonna see is this. First of all, we're gonna go out and do team tempo versus the defense like we have been doing. Each morning when I walk in, I want to do a good job of presenting the new information. And really, I want those guys to get a good idea of, okay, this is the corner you're gonna face this week, and here's the technique he uses. Coach Johns is the quarterback coach and the receiver coach, so all of our meetings are together. How many steps for the inside guy on the post? still a seven-step post. You must cross what? We talk about everything. We talk about uh, schemes, coverages, uh, coverage beaters. I know what, with the receivers and quarterbacks meeting together, we see, we try to find and try to see the same thing that they're seeing. When you run your hits, give the QB his eyes before you uncover inside. That makes sense? Give him a chance in case he wants to throw that hitch. Anytime you talk passing game, you're going to use that word chemistry to be on the same page. And I think that it would be an issue if it weren't that those guys didn't do so many reps together. We've been rotating three quarterbacks for a long time, and then now in the fall just two, that to the receivers, to them, I don't think it's a big deal who goes out there. I think that they know if I run my route the correct spot, the quarterback's gonna put the ball where he needs to put it. Timing is very important. We got a lot of routes that, are, that match up with the protection, so our drop backs have to match up, so if they're running the speed out, we gotta know that they're gonna get out the break at the right time. It's not one person ever on a football team, that's what's special about football, it's such a team sport. Not one person can be like, can do it all by themselves. They have to have help and uh, that's what our receivers do a great job of. Our tight ends, our O-line, of opening things up for me or Trey. Takes the snap, 
Looks down the middle, throws the football over the middle, and Cody Latterman makes the catch, breaks two tackles, down to the 50, he's going to go! Cody down to the 30, down to the 20, cuts back in, great run to the one! Be a great teammate, I think shows, again, how much they respect each other, how much they respect what we're trying to build, and how much they understand how the group, as the group functions, the individual things are going to happen. I've sat for five and a half years being the backup quarterback, and my life's changed a whole lot. I didn't think that was even possible from one pass that I'm supposed to do. Getting, you know, Twitter mentions from Gabriel Union, a follow from Larry the Cable Guy, stuff that I wouldn't even imagine was possible actually happened. Not too many people can you know, sit around and wait for something that possibly but may never ever happen. Whenever your time comes, you have to be ready, especially at the quarterback position. There's only one person playing. So at any moment, you could get called upon with Taylor going down and stuff. Luck, I mean, I don't want to say luckily, but that's, you know, it's happened this season. This should be the final play of the game unless there's the defensive penalty. Geronimo is one of our last drive plays. The quarterback is to run around, give everyone a chance to get down the field, throw it to the middle guy, which is Quincy Anumwa. He's the tipper. And then you have four rebounders with the other four receivers. And that's when Jordan Westerkamp sneaks around and catches the ball. It's going to be tipped and caught! It's caught in the touchdown, Westerkamp! Ron being, you know, a local kid and a fifth year senior, having that, you know, in his last season here, it's a great way to go out. To be linked with Ron on a play like that, you know, forever, it's 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 a pretty cool thing, pretty, pretty humble thing as well. So that I decided to kick up, kick up, kick up, and throw it. And then I fell. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know what to do after that. And then you hear the roar of the crowd, so then I take off this way. That was the fastest I've ever seen him run in my life. I blacked out after I heard everyone screaming, so the first reaction was to run. I noticed everyone on the sideline run into the field, and I was like, I don't want to be a part of a dog pile, so I started running away. I get paranoid, and I'm claustrophobic. One of our offensive tackles, uh, Jeremiah Strills, had a panic attack uh, from the dog pile and I didn't want to have that situation happen to me. I was trying to do the same thing but I got like tackled right away by my own guys. That's a lot of bodies plus pads and helmets. You would want to be on the bottom of that. <laughs> the Journey Big Ten Football 2013 is presented by Best Buy.